Good morning, and welcome to worship, whether you are joining online on this Sunday, Sunday morning, or here in person. It is good to be worshiping together. My name is Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor, and we are excited this morning, hoping and praying that we will be encountering God together as we gather from wherever we happen to be. I'm Reverend Lori Landon. I'm filling in for Scott Beard, who is on grandparent duty this Sunday. And I want to thank Nancy Pennington and Rebecca Murphy for helping us out with our music today. So, As we begin to think about settling into our time of worship, a few announcements. Our worship is guided by our bulletins, either online or what you received as you came into the room. You'll find our responses in there, hymnals in your pews, um, or the music in our online bulletin as well. Um, you will also find in that several announcements, one of which coming up this week, the, our neighbors group that is studying how to be good neighbors to those who might be different than us in our community is reading a book, 400 Souls. They're resuming this week on Zoom um, on January 25th. So if you'd like to know more about that, take a look at your bulletin or shoot us a message um, and we can get you that Zoom link if you are interested. Um, and also note that we will be celebrating Holy Communion as we do each week and so we invite you for those at home to have crackers and juice or bread, whatever you might have at home. For those in this room, we'll be coming forward to receive communion later in the service. And now we do what we do each week to prepare our hearts and our minds and our worship spaces. This morning we light candles and we invite you, for those of you who are worshiping online, to have a source of light someplace with you, perhaps a candle, to light it as we light these, acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is already at work in our midst without us even knowing. You would stand with me for our call to worship today. You'll find that in your bulletin or online bulletin. We gather together, welcomed by God. The, the joy, joy of God, God is, is our, our strength. strength. Come, let us worship God who revives our souls. The joy, joy of God, God is, is our strength. strength. The Spirit of God is upon us, bringing us together in love and service. The joy, the joy of, of God, God is, is our strength. strength. Join with the heavens and earth in telling the goodness of God. The, the joy, joy of God, God is, is our strength. strength. And our first hymn this morning will be Let All Things Now Living. It's number 2008 in your small black hymnals or your online bulletins.
invite you to join together with one voice across time and space in our affirmation of faith. We believe in God, creator of the world and all people, and in Jesus Christ, incarnate among us, who died and rose Rose again, again. and in the the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, present present with with us to guide, guide, strengthen, and comfort. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the the upholding of human human dignity dignity and community, in in every every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation. reconciliation. Through the the presence presence of Jesus Christ Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, we commit commit ourselves to the way of Christ Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk risk ourselves in faith, hope, and and love, praying praying that that God's kingdom kingdom may come. come. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. This is our time where we come together in prayer, acknowledging all that has happened in our weeks, acknowledging all of those things that we hold closely, the celebrations and the grief. This week, we are praying with the family of Novell Meredith. She passed away earlier this week, a long-term member of this congregation. Um, We give her giving thanks for her life and praying with Scott, um, her son, and others in her family. We also know that there may be many unspoken griefs that we don't know. And as we light candles, we acknowledge those and acknowledge that God knows the cries of our hearts. And as we come to the Lord in prayer this morning, we do so trusting in the power of the Spirit to lift our concerns to God. Let us pray. God of all mercy and grace, source of love, We come with gratitude and joy for all the ways in which we've been able to celebrate goodness. We see that this world around is not as it could be, and we come as people who have deep desires for a future that is different. We pray for peace in conflict, even when we do not know what lies ahead. We pray for wisdom to hear when you call us to be part of making earth as it is in heaven, and for the courage to stand up and speak out on behalf of others, even when that may come at a price. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayers. prayers. For those who are caring for loved ones, for those feeling isolated and lonely, for those dealing with short-term illness and injury, for those dealing with cancer and other long-term conditions, for those worried for their mental and emotional health, for those whose finances keep them up at night, for those who struggle to forgive, and for all of us whose lives are touched by a number of things that there isn't room to list here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We know that you hear the silent cries of our hearts and that the Spirit groans on our behalf even when we don't have the words. We lift up those dear to us. We lift up the needs, the worries, the places where we are weak. We lift up the situations to which you have opened our eyes. Transform us in love that we would reflect the risen Christ, bringers of healing, peace, and liberation for all those in our path. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Our next hymn will also be from the small black hymnal or in your online bulletin, Gather Us In. It's number 2236.
been gathered, we now hear this scripture from the Gospel of Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where they had, he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Amen. Amen. Well, in these weeks between Christmas and Lent, we've been looking at the ways that calling is expressed in the lectionary scriptures, in these stories about the life of Jesus. We heard it in the Epiphany story as the wise travelers encountered the young Jesus through his baptism, and last week as his mother turned to him to turn water into wine. Each of these stories tell a piece of Jesus's life, and they reveal a bit more of the way that his purpose unfolded as it was revealed in that time and place in the middle of daily life. Now, sometimes we may think of calling as something that happens in sort of a eureka, aha kind of moment. The light bulb goes off and things instantly fall into place for a clear rest of the story. But like many things, the discovery of purpose and calling, while sometimes it happens that way, is often far more gradual. And even though there are moments of epiphany, moments of that, oh, this is what it is, along the way, those are often only a part of a much lengthier process of discovery. And as the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell the story of Jesus, we are invited in as we read them and hear them into their gradual discovery of not only who Jesus is, but the unfolding of their calling. And for us, the discovery of ours as his followers. And as I read over this scripture this week from Luke, where Jesus announces his purpose and his calling back in his hometown, the place where he had grown up to the people who many of them likely remembered him when, when he was tiny, when he was not as he stood before them as a fully grown adult. And I was reminded of an experience from a few years back in a strange sort of way. One of our worship class assignments for seminary was to visit different types of Christian worship services, different styles. And the timing happened to match when a Latin mass was being held over in Novinger, up at the church on the top of the hill. Some of you have probably driven past it. 
Now, I couldn't understand almost anything. It was all in Latin. I stood when they stood. I kneeled when they knelt. But there was one piece that I could understand even without knowing the words. It transcended language. In the Catholic tradition, there's a point in the Eucharist where it is believed that the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. And on that bitterly cold, snowy night, a lot like this one, they rang a small bell inside the church at that moment, but that wasn't all. Somebody slipped outside, and there is a huge three-foot-high cast-iron bell in front of the church, and they rang that bell. The sound, I would imagine, flowed throughout the town, calling to all who would listen, Christ is present. God is here. And I thought of that when I read this passage from Luke. We don't hear of any bells that rang in the synagogue that day to announce that God is here. When Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, stood up in his hometown when the Sabbath day came, and I had to wonder, did they walk through the doors that day expecting God? Did his family, friends, and neighbors have any idea that the young man standing in front of them was God, now in flesh appearing, was worshiping with them that day? Or did they gather, as we sometimes do in this day and time, More of a sense of, I want to see my friends, I want to catch up, I need to get out of the house after a long winter. I wonder, did they come prepared for an epiphany? And I wonder, do we, when we gather together? Now Jesus, the hometown boy back for a visit, he was invited to read that day's scripture. From the book of Isaiah, it would have been written on a large scroll, likely, and it was probably the regularly scheduled passage for the day, much like our modern lectionary told us that today the lectionary passage is from Luke 4, and on that day that Jesus went, the passage was from Isaiah 61. And the message paraphrase of the scriptures describes the moment In a little different wording, unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, God's spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. And I wonder, did they catch that he was announcing God's presence unfolding before them? Or was it just another week's scripture reading? Luke describes that every eye was on Jesus as he sat down, watching him intently. And I wonder if they recognized the revelation And Jesus spoke those words today. This scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, you just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. Jesus was not just the carpenter's son. He was not just Mary's boy or that one that we knew when. He was the long-awaited Messiah. God present among us. It was an epiphany in Nazareth. And Jesus came to bring the wonderful news of God's presence and love. A love and presence that was life-changing, especially to those who were in the most need. As Jesus said in his reading of Isaiah 61, his work was simple simple but challenging, right? Bringing good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of the sight to the blind, let the oppressed go free, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
Now, this wasn't anything new. Jesus was telling them things they already knew. They had heard this passage of Isaiah read probably many times before. These were things that they believed in as truth from Scripture and ways that they would have hoped to see God's justice enacted for them. And in the modern day context, they might have even gotten an amen from those who were listening. And they might have even gone a step further. Jesus is a guy from Nazareth, right? They might have thought that his standing up and proclaiming that as God's chosen one, well, maybe that meant they were first in the line for God's blessings and favor. Makes sense, right? And this is the part of the story where the words and actions of Jesus that day get him into trouble. This is the part that likely took courage to stay true to his calling because there must have been a temptation to say what they would want to hear, to look out into the eyes of those people he had known throughout his life and not say hard things like he was about to, but to say the words of comfort and to assure them that, yes, you'll be first in line. As one commenter noted, how do you break it to the hometown crowd that you did not come to please them? That you came to be faithful to the working out of God's redemptive purposes among them. The scriptures he read were good news for everyone. And ironically enough, that's the part where the people of Nazareth, and if we're honest, sometimes us, begin to get uncomfortable. We're not sure about the thought of God's mercy and love being extended to those we don't approve of right alongside us. Surely, surely we deserve that mercy and love just a little bit more than fill in the blank with whatever the name of the group of people that we currently see as them and not us. It's so another interesting thing that Jesus did that day as he read from those scriptures. He stopped the reading from Isaiah 61 short. If you go back into Isaiah 61, it goes on. Jesus claimed that the good news for all humankind was fulfilled in their hearing. He did not go on to read the line that talks about the day of vengeance. His calling was not to exact revenge on their enemies. It wasn't to kick out the Roman rulers. As much as there were many who would interpret his role that way as he talked about bringing the kingdom of God to earth. His calling was not to bring prosperity or fame or fortune even to those in his hometown and especially not if it meant suffering for others in the process. Now, this section of the story that we heard today is just the beginning. You'll have to wait until next week where we will look at how they respond. Jennifer gets that task. Um, how do they respond when Jesus does not meet their expectation that the Messiah would come to destroy the enemies of Israel and instead offers God's love and mercy. Here's a spoiler alert. Things turn ugly very quickly because human nature has not changed that much in the past 2,000 years. But as we think about this scripture, now pulling our attention back to us, as we have gathered here to worship today, here being wherever it is we are, whether we're here in this sanctuary, here in our homes, maybe here traveling, we can ask, do I expect to encounter God when I gather for worship? Because these scriptures are not just stories of a time long ago. They're an invitation into God's story that continues to unfold. And maybe just as important as asking as an individual, do I expect to encounter God? Maybe the question is, are we, as a faith community, 
as all of us who for whatever circumstances have brought you as a part of our very loosely conglomerated community of faith. Are we expecting to encounter God? Are we praying for the eyes to see and the ears to hear what our calling is as a church? We are invited into a calling that includes each of us as individuals, and yet it also goes beyond. And we often are brought together with other people who share similar, unique distinctives of how we are called to be stronger together. And when we realize that we are encountering the risen Christ, when that calling of Jesus inspires our own calling, to live out in whatever way it does God's vision of mercy and love and justice in our world? There's another question that we probably should ask. What do we do when it challenges our expectations of what that looks like? Because here's the thing. No matter how long you've been a follower of Jesus, whether you were sitting in a pew before you were born, as you grew with inside your mother, the calling of Jesus will almost always challenge how we see the world, how we see other people, how we see the truth of God working its way out. And that comes in unexpected ways. The truth that Jesus spoke that day in Nazareth one of the hard pieces of it was that God doesn't play favorites as much as that was how it was understood at that point in time. God doesn't love one person or one group more than others and sent Jesus for you and I and also whoever the them is in our lives. Because as this scripture reveals, there really is no us and them. There's just us. God's humanity. There's just God's love for all people. And it breaks God's heart. Not only when we turn away from God, but when we turn on one another and don't recognize the image of God within each other. There's only one Jesus, that one and only son, a humble servant sent for us all. And when Jesus says, love them like he does, well, it's not always easy, right? Because we know that that had a huge price for Jesus. And sometimes part of what loving like Jesus does means listening. Listening well to what other voices are saying. That when something comes along that challenges our long-held belief, maybe we listen to see what's behind it. We might discover that there's a way that we've been the ones who've misunderstood. We may also come out knowing that we're secure with how we've understood scripture. But when we hear the heart behind what people say, when we hear Jesus within the words, when we see the people made in God's image, we often discover that it is not what we expect, not where we expect, and sometimes, to be honest, not where we want it to be or what we want it to be. Um, another spoiler alert, we're going to hear a lot more about that next week because, yes, it turns ugly quickly. But from today, from this initial piece that Jesus shares, we can know that we too are called into that vision. That the time of God's Holy Spirit is today. As much as it was 2,000 some years ago. And that the presence of Christ is with us. Right here, right now, wherever that right here and right now happens to be. We are called to do our part in living out the good news of God's loving kindness. To join together in the mission of Jesus through our own distinctive way 
of loving God and loving neighbor. And as we reflect on that call, I'd like to share this prayer for the church. It was written by Reverend Emily Swan, and it paints a picture of the body of Christ that hopefully will encourage us in our calling, even as it may challenge some of our own expectations. Spirit of Jesus, come with the fire that refines, water that refreshes, wind that topples, breath that fills. Kindle a global revival of empathy, justice, and active peacemaking. Birth a witness of love that is bigger and better than what we inherited. Liberate us from privilege and oppression. Unshackle the gospel from nationalism, colonialism, white supremacy, and every other lens that shrouds the good news. Give us an abundance of grace for others and for ourselves. Grant us compassion for those who suffer. Free us from the influence of money, power, and acclaim, and restore our reputation for caring for the poor, loving our neighbors, being ambassadors of peace and stewards of the earth. Unlock the immense resources in the Western Church and release them. For your name's sake, encourage us so we do not grow cynical, isolated, and burnt out. Fan our hopes, our joys, and our connections. Allow us rest when we need rest and enable us to see you in every person we encounter. Show us mercy in our humanity. Let us love more fully than we thought possible. Let us not be quick on the draw, ready to retaliate, escalate, assassinate. Let our collective fervor for justice eclipse institutional concerns. Let us trust and follow the wisdom of those who've been marginalized. Let us persevere in creating safe places of worship to eat bread and drink wine together. Let us stand for love and with love, following the way of your son as best we're able. Let us not fear an experiential spirituality. Let us listen to the wondrous bodies you gave us. Let us hear your voice and tangibly feel you with us. Let us discern your guidance. Let us abide in you and with you. Show us what you're doing, Lord, so that we can work together. Move where you will, when you will, in whatever way you will. Come, Holy Spirit, and restore your church. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. That is what we pray together, and that is what we pray as we come to this table of grace together, where all are welcome, where we expect to encounter God, where we commune together. This is God's table, not the table of this particular congregation, not the table of the United Methodist Church. It is open to all who are seeking to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we invite you to partake this morning. For those who are communing at home, we invite you to have your elements ready here in a few moments. For those who are here in this space, we'll invite you forward here in a few moments to receive a cracker and a juice cup as we do in these times. And like I said, like any family table, there may be a little bit of awkwardness as we figure that out all together, and that is good and okay. One of the things that we acknowledge each time we come to the table is, as good as our intentions are, we do fall short. We have limitations. There are places that we are weak and broken, and God knows this. And so we come to receive God's mercy and forgiveness and love that strengthens us to go forward and try again. 
So let's pray together our prayer of confession. You'll find it in your bulletins. O ever-present God of liberation and justice, you call us to be your presence, your body in this world. Too often we go our separate ways, forgetting we need each other to be whole. Help us see with new eyes and hear with the ears of our heart the liberating spirit of your word that strengthens and revives and enables us to be and do all you call us to be and do. Amen. Hear this good news. The forgiveness and love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit brings healing and freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And as forgiven and reconciled people of Jesus Christ, we invite you to share, to truly share that peace of Christ with each other in the comments online. Here in this space, turn and wave, even stand up perhaps. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. The peace, peace of Christ, of Christ be, with be with each you. of you. Peace of Christ be with you. Hmm. Oh, when Jesus entered this world, it was to be God with us. He was anointed by the Spirit for that wonderful mission that we read earlier. He announced the time had come that God's salvation would be available to all who would receive it. And on the night before he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread there at the table with the disciples. He broke it and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup in a similar way. He gave thanks to God, and blessed it, shared it with all of them. And he said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the remission of sins and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and so today as we gather at the table of Jesus we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us, and we proclaim that mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so as Christ lifted that bread so long ago, we lift our bread today, trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit that brings us together as one body. And as Christ lifted the cup, we lift our cups Again, remembering in the power of the Holy Spirit to unite us together as one. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his table forever. Amen. Amen. And now, before we feast, we pause to bless our meal together in one voice. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we feast together. For those worshiping online, we invite you now. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
we invite you to linger with that moment. Whatever that moment is for you, no need to rush it. As you are ready, we invite you to pray this prayer of response together. Eternal God, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks for this holy mystery in which, which you have given yourself to us, one, one body gathered in you. Grant, grant that we may go into our days in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we invite you to stand as we go to our next hymn, which is We Are Called. It once again is from your small black hymnals or in your online bulletin, and it is number 2172. benediction today is a responsive one, so you will want to glance at your bulletins for this. The Spirit of God is upon you. We go forth proclaiming God's love and liberation. The example of Christ is before you. We go forth to live lives of justice and freedom. The power of the Spirit is upon you. We go, we go forth, forth as, as one body, body one, one spirit, spirit, one witness to the promises of our God. Amen.